The fire began in May. State and local officials told Magnolia County residents that everything was under control and their lives continued, even with the threat of wildfires so close by. But unfortunately, the worst case scenario happened. The small brush fire outside of the town of Bailey quickly grew into a massive forest fire. And that massive forest fire rapidly spread towards the most populated areas in the county, including its seat, the city of Bend. The flames in the forest quickly spread to nearby homes, eventually taking entire city blocks before spreading to some of the largest buildings in the entire county. All told, over 3,000 residents lost their lives, 13% of the county population. There isn't a single person in the county that wasn't impacted by the loss of life, and residents are absolutely furious at their elected officials. One local small business owner, Charles King, has been holding rallies daily outside of City Hall demanding accountability. He believes that the fires began because of the construction of a new petroleum refinery, near where the fire was first spotted. He's been pointing out that the state recently fast-tracked construction of the facility, along with many shale oil fields in the pristine Hiawatha Forest that Superior is famous for. And he has accused officials of sacrificing safety for speed. In response to the disaster, the state's governor, Sheila Johnson, held a press conference earlier today promising new disaster detection facilities, emergency shelters, grants for death care expansion, and a disaster memorial. However, she was quickly drawn up by the crowds of protesters organized by Mr. King, demanding accountability. This story is still rapidly evolving, so stay tuned to WSUP for more information about this and other important stories. So in this episode, we're going to be focusing on disaster recovery and preparation. To do so, we'll expand our death care capacity, add disaster detection facilities, and add emergency shelters throughout the entire community. And after we finish that, we'll plan out a new neighborhood around a massive disaster memorial. And if you think that the governor's response was adequate, hit the like button. Or if you're on Team Chuckles, hit the like button for that too, and let me know how you feel in the comments. Or leave an emoji letting me know how you feel for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello and welcome back to Magnolia County. And though in the previous episode we got the fires to subside, we still have all of the ramifications of the massive fire that swept through the area. Let's focus a little bit on disaster recovery and begin with our death care. Now, if we take a look at this, we can see that it says that we're having a thousand deaths per month. That's not real. That is the number of deaths that we had last month. We've got a lot of bodies to take care of. Now, it's really tempting to just spam a bunch of crematoriums and cemeteries and have things shake their way out like that, but I don't want to do that. We're going to be smart about this. So I want to take a look at the first crematorium that we placed in the entire region and upgrade it. So that's right here over in Bend, and we've got three upgrades available. The first upgrade is an incinerator, which increases the speed at which bodies can be processed. Right now, we're able to process 100 bodies per month. This will increase our capacity by an additional 50, so that will improve our speeds quite a bit, but only if we can bring the bodies to the crematorium, which is why we are going to add an additional hearse garage. So I'm gonna add that right in the back. We are gonna make sure that our contour lines are on, we can see it's fairly flat. Maybe we'll even add two of these. And then our final upgrade is the refrigerator expansion, which allows us to store more bodies before they are cremated. So this one is probably not quite as necessary right now, but it's really hard to tell without all of those hearses being deployed. So because we've added so many hearses, I'm gonna say that this is probably gonna be something that we need and it will provide us capacity from, from now and into the future. So we might as well add it on. All of this makes this a very expensive facility, but I'd rather have one expensive centrally located facility than a whole bunch of little facilities that don't have enough capacity sprinkled throughout the entire region. And before we move on from this, let's do a little bit of terraforming just to make sure that our little jaggedy edges here are looking okay. Oh, well, that wasn't it. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm making it worse. I'm I'm rusty. I'm clearly rusty. And I went on vacation and played a lot of Timberborn. <laughs> clearly I'm struggling a little bit here, but it's going to get better throughout the entire episode. It'll get better. That looks much, much, much better. Now, the next thing I want to focus on is some of our disaster warning systems and our shelters. And for that, we are going to need to spend some development points. So let's pop into our progression menu and underneath fire and rescue, we've got three things to unlock. Reasonably, I really want this early disaster warning system that would have helped us save some of our citizens from the fire, but we have to unlock all of our shelters first. And I'm thinking that we're going to place that early detection center at the university. To me, this feels like the sort of, maybe it's a, 
a meteorology building or something of that nature on the campus. But here's the thing. If we take a look at the campus right now, there's not really a home for this. We've got our chancellor's home right here. I guess we could tuck this away by our satellite. It kind of feels out of place. The place I think I'd really love to have this would be right over here near our natural resources building, but that's on a hillside and on a road. So I think we're gonna buy this tile right here and then we'll extend Walnut Street out and place this building somewhere off from there to have a pedestrian connection right to this facility. So let's buy our tile. And now let's extend our pedestrian facility towards our new building. So I've upgraded that all the way along there and I just wanna make sure that we're level and it looks very level right here, which is perfect. We'll just extend this out. And honestly, I see some lumpies and bumpies here. I'm wondering how visible it is. It's not that bad on the ground. So it's one of those things where it looks bad in contour mode. I still think I might fix it. I, I'm, I'm crazy like that, so we're gonna do it. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this is we are grading for this new facility. What I'm thinking that we're gonna do, we've extended this road out quite a ways. And now let's place this facility and see what it does. And we can see that the early disaster warning system contains multiple high-end detection systems that can spot approaching natural disasters in advance. It adds 360 disaster alert time citywide. No idea what that means. If you guys know, let me know down in the comments. And it also reduces disaster damage by 20% citywide. So it sounds like it's valuable and I hope that it's gonna be helpful because it's gonna cost us a quarter million per month. So it is very expensive. That said, uh, it's it's City Skylines too, where the budgets are kind of like points in whose line is it anyways. The show where everything is made up and the points don't matter. It doesn't matter, it's gonna be just fine. <laughs> We're gonna be able to afford this thing. Now, I don't like the orientation of this building, so let's try to rotate this around. It's locking on. What I'm thinking that we're gonna do, you can see that it has those two staircases. I wanna back this a ways back. I'll place it somewhere like this. And interestingly enough, it wants the road connected at the side of this fence right here. So I will, uh, I will, I will listen and disagree politely, City Skylines too. And then I'm gonna upgrade this to a pedestrian facility. It's, it's mad about something. This is not good enough for it, apparently. So we might need to just move this building a little bit. I knew we could get away with it. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm not sure what this space is for, but we'll reserve this for another campus use in the future because the campus isn't done growing. And now I just wanna run this up here and we'll do something like that to complete our pedestrian connection. Now, I do wanna have some more pedestrian connections from this building. What I think we'll do is we'll extend this out a little bit further. And then I'm just gonna snap to the side of the building right here, try to get somewhere right in the center and try to come up with something like this that looks a little bit decorative. And there we go, that is looking good. Now let's take a look at this facility. I just wanna make sure that it's working. It's working great. It also has 40 employees, which is a nice surprise. So we should be good there. There's one last thing I want to do, and that is add some of our small emergency shelters and maybe one large emergency shelter. And I say only one because you can see that this large emergency shelter actually has enough capacity for the entire region right now. But that to me doesn't make a ton of sense. What we're going to do is add one emergency shelter on campus. So I think we'll even add that close to this building. And now you can have this as just a standalone shelter for 1,000 people with five tons of food, but you can also upgrade this thing and have additional capacity. I think we're gonna do that. So this will add an extra 500 right here. And we'll say that the this is really dedicated to the entire university. You can also add additional food, which will allow citizens to stay there for longer. Makes sense to me, so I think we'll do that as well. Now there is something interesting. I found a bug. The moment that we add this, we're gonna see that this thing is no longer connected to water, power, or anything. The way that we fix that is to relocate the building and give it the old shaky shaky and then just place it again. And it's even more mad now. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was frustrating. <laughs> so over here, it's happy. I don't know why, it doesn't make any sense. It shouldn't be any happier over here than it was over here, but we're gonna roll with it anyway. So now I just wanna, I wanna see. 
Oh, you, you deliver it over there. We'll move it over here. I bet you it's going to work now because reasons. <laughs> so now that it's working, I'm just, I'm going to step away. But I wanted to demonstrate this because this is going to be a problem with all of these. And if you place this building and you see issues, just move it after you've upgraded it. And then it'll likely work at some point in time. Hopefully that bug is resolved. I've thought a lot about where a facility like this should go. And at least where I am, I, I think of these as like the fallout shelters. It's the only comparable thing that we have in the US. And generally those are in public buildings. So you might see an elementary school with a fallout shelter sign. That's at least what I have around me. So I think that even though it's a little bit morbid, we're gonna place it over here. We've also got space on relatively flat ground. So I don't want this to be super prominent though. And I'm wondering if I just pull this back a little ways, if I can tuck it away behind some bushes. And I think I will be able to, to do so. We'll do that in the detailing section though. But here's the interesting thing about this asset. So this is the large shelter. I have no upgrades. So if you are curious about that, you cannot upgrade the large emergency shelter. It's already maxed out. Now there are two more shelters I wanna add. We're gonna add one over in Bailey and maybe even one over here on Charity Island. And there we go. That gives us some headway in terms of our disaster management capabilities, though we will need to start to factor this in as we build new neighborhoods. And though we are not completely back to normal, I think that we're well on our way. So let's move on to Platting Myrtle Park. Now, I think I know what you're thinking. Why are we going with Myrtle Park? The main reason for that is I think that we have to appease Myrtle. Here's the thing. Two episodes back, we came through here and Robert Moses our way through the university. And we took out the Myrtle roundabout. And I'm not sure that it's a coincidence that we've had this massive fire. So, so that we appease Myrtle, we are going to be making the new neighborhood of Myrtle Park right here. And in the center of this neighborhood, we're going to have our disaster memorial. So this is going to be a very unique and interesting neighborhood, completely master planned. But the very first thing we need to do is gain access to this area. And I want to extend what we were doing over here to the other side of the highway so that it's nice and orderly. So the first thing I want to do is take the coastal road and run that underneath the highway. And I thought that this was going to be a problem when I built the bridge in the previous episode. And I'm 100% sure it's going to be a problem now because I can't run it through. So we are going to have to call a bit of a mulligan on the highway. I'll just sneak this through here. And we'll extend this all the way over to the edge of the map following the coastline. And there we go. So now we just need to reconnect up our highway with our bridge. But I think we're going to need to elevate the bridge just a bit. So I'll take this back a couple of spans. And I'll take this back too because I'm crazy. And now we will boost this up. That easy peasy. Now... I'm going to be honest with you, this is different and this could bug me. This really could bug me. I'm going to let it go. We don't need to go crazy. That is going to, it'll be bad if I get crazy. So we'll just, I will live with it. I will live with it. I will not live with it. I cannot live with it. We must get these bridge spans to be the same. So what I'm going to try to do is back these out just a little ways. I'm going to give myself a node. And then I think sloping up to that will probably do the trick of fixing our bridge span right there. It's my hope anyway. That looks pretty good. Now we'll get rid of this. It is 100% perfect. Exactly as I was hoping it'd be. Now I'm going to finish off the rest of this grid right here and then we'll cross over. So let's just draw out a couple of these roads. And I think that's more or less a copy of what we were doing right here. The thing is, this road is a little bit off, so we'll have to live with a bit of imperfection. If I adjust it, I'll break all my zoning here. And sometimes things just aren't perfect. Now, I know that I want this road right here to go up and over the top of the highway. So if I were to have a connection between this road and this one, which I want to do, I think I need to boost it up just a bit. So let's bump this up just slightly. And then I'm going to slope to those locations. And the goal here is going to be that I make a connection between these two roads at the crest of the hill. And then I can cross straight over the top with this one. 
and hopefully get enough height to go right over our highway. And I've got this stubbed in here, but I think I want to hold this thought because I really want a frontage road all the way along the highway for our new neighborhood. So let's get that moving right now. And to do that, I think I'm going to use the two lane highway and we'll upgrade it once we make our changes. And I'm going to increase the offset to about five. I think five should give us enough separation to have mostly full zoning behind here. And I think that we'll stop there and I'm just going to make sure that the roadway directionality is correct. So it's pulling that one back there and things are looking good. And there we go, frontage road all the way along there. All we have to do is upgrade this by replacing this. And that is looking really, really good. Now, while we're in the replace tool, I do wanna preserve some of the Jeffersonian grid. I mentioned this road right here. This is gonna be an important one for us. This is gonna be where we start one of our grids. And I'm going to upgrade all the way along the side here. And next, I want to connect this bridge or this potential bridge all the way across. And it let me get away with that, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, that, that's pretty ugly. We're going to give this one more attempt. So I'll just get rid of these. That's a little more in line with what I was hoping for. I'm going to see if I can improve this further by using our mods. And look at that. If I try to use a retaining wall here, it'll actually add it all the way through the highway. So that's not going to work. That will technically work, but look at that. We've get this, we get this ugly thing. It, it completely corrupted the way it looks. So I've got one more attempt in me and we'll do this vanilla like, and basically I just want to bump this up and you can see I was able to do that, but man, the lumpies and the bumpies are absolutely insane in this area. It's going to drive me crazy. Oh my goodness, this was an absolute mess. I'm gonna try to fix this now because it is on ground. I basically had to bump this entire area up and redraw all these roads. There's just so many lumpies, so many bumpies. I, it's just, it just won't end. It just won't end. But I think that right there might be my smoothing, my smoothening of this. And hopefully now we're good. This looks good. There is no upside down. Okay, that is about as good as it can get. Now, all of that is to say that I wanted one more right here. So I think I have an idea. I have an approach. So we're going to grab a height from over here, pull it into the center. And then we'll just add some roads right here. And that should give us a retaining wall, which should be much better. There we go. And now hopefully... Okay, now <laughs> done that. our bridge finally looks acceptable. I'm going to stop. I'm going to step away from the bridges and let's move over here and begin our grid. And I want to go with something fairly simple. We're going to turn on snap the geometry, zoning cell length, 90s and the grid. And I just want to do what we were doing over in some of these other areas, going up 14 and over 20, which gives us a nice full grid. Now, before you get too attached to what I'm doing right now, I want to warn you that I'm going to be deleting significant portions. We're really going to let our park dictate the layout of our grid. So I do want to use this road right here, which is kind of going to be the main road in this entire neighborhood as the dividing line between the grids. So I'm going to send this up at 180 and then I'll turn this in and get rid of all these extra roads. Now on this other side, we're going to orient the grid around this road, Lilac Street, and we'll use the exact same grid. So 20 over and 14 up. And there we go there. We've got this divided into two separate grids going in different directions. And generally, this area right here is going to be where we have our park. 
So now comes the interesting part. We are going to design this park kind of based on some of the parks in Washington, D.C. So we'll use lots of geometric shapes, yet still try to have a free flowing movement through here and orient some of the roads around the park. The very first thing I want to do is figure out where the center of this park is. So we're going to be using our pads from here on out for a while. And that will be where our fountain goes. I'm going to get rid of this extra path for now, along with all of the trees, which are really going to just cause problems for us. And there we go. Now I want to create two ovals that overlap in the middle of this park. And there we go. That's pretty good. I'm going to send up. I, I, I re-added this path right here temporarily. And I think we'll send this up maybe three and a half units on both sides. And I basically want to have another oval going around these ovals that we already have here. And there we go. I like that quite a bit. Now, coming over this way, I've got an idea and we're going to see how it's going to turn out. I basically want to use a portion of the cemetery as an amenity for this area. So I'm thinking of some of the monuments that have like walls, with people's names on it. I want to do something similar here. And there's basically a mausoleum that comes with the cemetery that I think could perform the same function here. So I'm going to snap to the side of the building and I want to have a road that comes out from here. And the whole reason I have this is we are going to pop into the dev menu. We need to place a cemetery first. It needs to snap to this road. Then we'll hit escape out of here so that we maintain that angle. And then we are going to use this asset right here. And I just want to center this along this little path that we've created and you can see that basically there is a center walkway and that center walkway should be perfectly aligned with the center path that we have here and that is just about as good as i'm going to be able to get that by eyeballing it now i'm going to wrap this all the way around And there we go. We wrapped that all the way around. It was deeply disturbed by something happening over here and didn't want to cooperate initially, but now it's good. I'm going to once again find that center and we'll send this right down. And now we can use zoning cell length to get our one unit over or rather two units over. So we have one unit of separation in between there. And we've basically mirrored what we did on the other side. And the nice thing about focusing on another side right away is that now we can mirror things on either side if we have snap to guidelines on. Now, there are a couple of interesting things I want to point out. Obviously, we've got our little texture in a rough spot here. We'll fix that one, even though in the previous episode I said I'm done with that. I lied to you, so we're going to do that anyway. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is that there's no way to reach this path to anything because we have this little structure right here. So I think we'll just loop this around. I'm sending these all the way through because they make the nicest connections when you do that. We just have to remember to go through and remove all these crosswalks. Maybe leave one in the middle or something like that. Not 100% sure exactly how we're terminating these yet. So I guess that's what we'll do for now. Now I want to loop around this. So we are going to really massacre the grid that we've put together. And let's do something totally different. And now it's nice and evenly wrapped through here. We can finish our paths off and we have a goal for reconnecting all of this. So the goal is going to be that we have nice, even, clean connections into our existing grids. So I'll do things like create nodes here. So I can just turn this nice and cleanly into there and we'll do the exact same thing here. Another way that you could accomplish the same thing would be to use the complex curve tool. I just think that this is probably a little bit easier right here. And 
And now more direct inspiration from DC. We're going to take this and try to get this to line up nicely right here. And now that we've got this messy junction at the end, we know how to fix this. A nice roundabout right there. And now I want to add some more intricate details around the park. So we're going to focus on the zoning grid and we are going to use primarily our straight line tool. I'm going to back this all out one unit. Actually, we'll switch over to our continuous. There we go. And I just think that gives a little bit more definition to this area. And then the last next thing I want to do is ensure that this is good for utilitarian purposes. And for that, we'll do something like this. And then I've got to reestablish. It looks like we're missing a road right here. So we'll get this one added in as well so that we can add this path once again. Now, I'd love to give this a little bit more flair. So I'm going to do something like this. And it's a little thing, but I think the little things add up over time. And now I'm going to add some additional detail through here. So I, in my head, know that I want to place a bunch of textures through here and decals. So we are going to add small separations like this. And there we go. I just can't help myself. I just kept going. And then one of the final things I want to do here is adjust some of our surfaces. So this is going to involve us actually deleting the surfaces that came with this. And then I'm going to add some back in, but I want to test a couple of these. And I kind of want something that's going to stand out. So I think we'll go with tile surface three. And there we go. I think that stands out really nicely. It's a little bit of jank right here, but that's kind of to be expected when you overlap. Just got to overlook some of that. And now what I'm going to do is where I have two paths, I'm going to run these surfaces right through. And I think it's going to help it stand out a lot when you're zoomed quite a ways away. And then I think for the center where we're going to place our fountain, I'm going to do something completely different. And then for the rest of this, let's just add a grassy surface. And there we go. That covers up all of our surfaces and we are well on our way with our park. But I think we're going to save the landscaping for later. And there's one more thing that I want to do in this neighborhood, and that is add an interchange to it, something that we didn't do in the previous part of the build. Now, for this interchange, I'm imagining it being something a little bit sloppy. So we will have a couple of lanes that meet up right here at a roundabout. And that'll be half of the interchange. The other part will basically be a partial cloverleaf that meets up right here. So let's begin with the partial cloverleaf leg. And what we'll do is just send up a road. Just kind of like that. And I'm going to upgrade the legs here. And we'll do the other side too while it's on our mind. And now I'm going to use the continuous tool. And I just love this tool because you can click through and then just loop back around and end up with these perfect little connections. And now from here, I'm going to upgrade this portion to be a ramp off the highway straight into this road that we just created. And then we'll connect up right here in this lane, meet up with our highway and merge right in nice and gently. But after a bit of tinkering, I think we got something that looks pretty darn good. The one thing I want to do, because this is not a very long queuing distance, is I want to add a turn lane for the folks leaving the highway. 
So we'll do something like that. That gives them dedicated lefts and rights. It'll function a ton better. It's basically doubling the capacity. So that side is looking very good. Now over here, we're gonna do something, whoa, messy and ugly, and it's gonna be just fine. So we're basically going to make a connection like this right into the highway. And then I'll do the exact same to get back on the highway. And then we'll throw in a roundabout. It is super ugly and it will work just fine. Plenty of queuing distance and plenty of distance to merge back on as well. Ugly interchange, it will do the trick. Now the funny thing about all of this is I worried about getting these to be just perfectly even before and look at them now, they are not. <laughs> so I'm gonna let my madness take over and I'll do my best to fix it. There we go. I just started changing a whole bunch of things and it's probably just as good as it was before, but I like it more. So we're going to roll with it. I think it looks completely fine. So now with our neighborhood platted, let's move on to zoning and city services. And for the most part, this neighborhood is going to be fairly simple. It's going to be taking what we've done over here and reducing the density over here. What I'm thinking is that around the park, we'll have some row homes and we'll add a few small city service buildings throughout this area. But truthfully, most of it's covered by this area right here. So we've already got a large police department. We've already got a school. Our high school coverage is obviously very good. So the one thing that's missing is a fire department. And you better believe that we're not going to miss that right here. So let's add that fire department. And I'm thinking that we'll add it right at the top to make it something very prominent for this location. I'm gonna turn off my road snapping so I can focus this on the curved road right here. And then in terms of our upgrades, the only upgrade that we have increases the number of fire engines. And I'm gonna be super liberal with our upgrades with fire coverage for the time being because we've had so many issues. So we'll upgrade that right away. I also wanna take a look at this asset. One thing I'm noticing is that there is no parking for the workers of this building. So that is a little bit strange. We will add a little bit of parking and we'll make that free for the firemen. And then while I'm thinking about fire coverage, I don't know that we added fire watchtowers everywhere. So I think that considering we had so many trees burned down, I mean, look at this. There are basically no trees on this hill anymore. We are gonna add a number of these fire watchtowers and then we'll come back to adding the rest of our city services over here. And you can see the scars of this fire are absolutely crazy all over the place. So I'm going to I'm going to turn on snapping to the sides of the road and we'll just add these to a couple of locations and you can see the coverage is really large for this. So it, they'll go a long ways. We don't need to add many of these. And honestly, I was looking at the more urban areas over here and it just doesn't make a ton of sense to add a number of them there. But I do think adding some on Charity Island and maybe over here by our industrial area, those make more sense. Lots of trees and not a lot of else going on. So we'll add a few over here as well. And lastly, we'll add some over here to Bailey. And that should provide us with fairly good coverage. We do have to look at this one though. I could tell right away I wasn't getting this in an adequate location. We'll just add an underground power cable. We've already got that underneath here anyway. And we are all set there. So now that we have that, I'm gonna come back over to Myrtle Park and we've got to add a couple of actual parks through here because that is a problem. Even though we have this big area, we don't have a Park Life DLC, so this is just a thing. And the thing that we have right here, our mausoleum sort of structure, isn't gonna do anything besides cost us money and look nice. So let's add a few parks. And of course, we've got to start out with a dog park because everyone loves a dog park. But I do want to get that a little ways away from this because it feels a little bit strange to have the dog park that close to what would be a pretty solemn location. And then we'll mix things up a little bit using some parks that I don't use all that often, such as the community pool. We'll add one of those over here. And this is a high visibility location knowing that Lake Street, which is gonna need to be renamed along with many of these streets. If you have some ideas for names, let me know down in the comments, but I'll add that right here along with some other sports parks. And there we go. In terms of city services, pretty bare bones, but I think it will do the trick. 
Now for our zoning, we will begin with some of our row homes. And I think we'll just fill in around here. We'll add some commercial along the coast, just like we did over here. And then we will load this area up as well. So for our row homes, I think we're gonna go fairly uniform. I'm gonna block zoning on the side streets temporarily. And there we go, we can see that this area is filling in really nicely. And I wanted to point out, I did add a couple of medium density buildings. We got one over here and one right here. And what I was really trying to do is maximize the benefit of this large park space for as many people as possible. This would be a heck of an amenity. You'd have the ability to walk through it, to have a picnic lunch as long as we don't over landscape. And really, this would be an excellent green space for this entire area. So now that this is filled in, let's remove some of those key walls that we use to limit our zoning. And now for the most part back here, we are going to have single family homes. I'm also, I noticed we didn't upgrade this street right here. I'm not sure why I didn't do that. It's gonna take care of that right away and make this connection. And then let's load this up with single family homes back here. And then I think right here, we are going to have a little bit of commercial, something that people could walk to in this neighborhood, corner stores, things of that nature. And it'll also serve these firefighters well. They'll be able to walk and go get groceries or go to a restaurant. So generally not a bad thing. And then we don't have a lot of need for office right now, but I think we'll add one over here. It would seem to be a compatible use in this area because of the noise that you'd expect to see on this block. Now back here, we are going to have mostly commercial uses once again. So I am going to mix in both North American and European back here, fairly tight with one another. And I'm not gonna lie, in my mind, I imagine this as a really walkable area right on the coast. And instead, we've got this little automotive hellscape. But it is what we are going to deal with. It's going to be just fine. Hopefully, when we get maybe the beach properties content creator pack, we can upgrade this because I'd imagine we get some walkable properties in there. Now, for the rest of this, I'm going to go fairly dense. This is closer to the water, and I would imagine that people would be very interested in living in this area. And I was going to put parking behind here, but why bother? Look at all the parking that is already and all these assets. So... And now that these areas are filling in, I do want to focus on the area along the highway. We're going to add some sound walls there, and then we'll have some residential along there. Not the greatest of places to live, but it would certainly be more affordable as a result of this. And I could see there being some desire as a result of that. And then in this small little area right here where there's not much that we can do, I'm gonna to try to sneak in a park. Let's see if I can fit it in. A small playground is definitely doable. So this area is filled in. I like the way that it's filling in, but we've got to finish this area as well. Now, one thing I noticed earlier while we were doing the roadway layouts is that this road used to turn into the highway and I severed it a little bit further back than I should have. So I'm going to extend this out. The main reason for this is roadway naming but we don't want to focus on that. We want, we're saying we're doing this because we get a couple more saleable lots. That's the reason. So we'll roll with that. And then we are going to fill in the rest of this kind of with the exact same type of zoning that we had before. So I just want to double check this. And the way you can do that is to click on a building and then you can see the zoning type right there. So this is clearly European. And one thing I'm noticing is that some of these buildings are spawning in on Meadow Lane. That is not what we want. So I'm going to get rid of Meadow Lane temporarily. And I think I'm well on record at this point of saying I really wish that the alleys acted differently, but they are the way that they are. So we're going to work within the system that we have. Uh, it, I think my preference would be that alleys just don't have zoning at all, but it is what it is. And easy peasy right there. Right here, we have North American row homes. So we'll do the exact same thing over here. And I think I'll take these ones right here and give them slightly larger lots, taking into account the actual landscape here. And in fact, one thing I don't love, I think maybe we extend these on a little bit further. 
and even leave a gap there because we are gonna use paths extensively through here. And once again, try to mirror what we were doing, which means that we'll have to call a bit of eminent domain on buildings that we just placed. And then while I'm thinking about it, I cleared the landscaping because we're gonna mirror what we did over here as well. I think right here around Grove Street, we will try to focus the zoning on Grove Street. And that is funky, <laughs> but it'll be just fine. And then more commercial right along the coast. And then finally, we have this area right along here where we haven't really zoned anything in the past. I think once again, we're gonna go with some single family homes. Mirror the other side now. And now hopefully that things have filled in. It's fairly obvious to see that we are mirroring the development patterns over here while tapering densities a bit on this edge, except close to the coast where the land values would be higher. And now with our zoning and city services in place, let's move on to a bit of landscaping and detailing. And for our landscaping and detailing, I'm gonna give you an overview of what we're gonna do all at once. So I want to obviously landscape the heck out of this park. We're gonna line some of the trails here and try to preserve open spaces and vistas as best we can. Right here, we're going to try to really densely landscape this one right here. And then we'll mirror the landscaping that we have over here in the rest of the neighborhood and then spray trees everywhere. We're also going to return to the other parts of the build that we looked at earlier, trying to make sure that our little early disaster warning system looks nice. And we are going to try to hide some of our disaster shelters. So let's get moving. Now we planted a ton of trees and they look really good, but we got to give the park some life with a fountain and some lights. So let's do that right now. And that's looking pretty good. The last thing I want to do through here is fix our districts. And I'm gonna create one district around the park. And then let's go ahead and fix this district. And now the tough district is gonna be the one that goes all the way around here. I'm gonna move the town of Lebanon first. And now we'll get this thing created. And I'm gonna to need to find a halfway point to basically turn around. And with that, we've renamed our park right here and given our neighborhood a name and I think that things are looking really really good they might be wondering why I didn't do anything with the coast we're gonna do something bigger and I'm all kind of waiting for that beaches <laughs> DLC to come out to see if there's something that we can do a little bit more special there so I have not forgotten about the coast I'm just waiting and now that we have finished all of our landscaping and detailing I want to point out one thing you don't see any dead bodies. So I'm really excited that we have resolved that issue. And in fact, I think our population is just about where it was when it started declining in the previous episode. So we are at an all time high and things are continuing to grow. So there's only one more thing left to do. That's take inventory of what we've done with a brief city tour.
And now let's make a couple of fixes based on your feedback. And most of our fixes are going to be right here in the town of Bailey. And speaking of the town of Bailey, the first fix comes from Turtle, who is excited to see that the town's name is Bailey because that's their wife's name. And they've requested that we rename one of the streets Ithaca because that's where they met. And I absolutely love that idea. I think we're going to take this main street right here, Pearl Street, and we'll rename it Ithaca Street. And then Red Bear took it up to the next level and recommended that we actually rename one of the junctions of this street, Turtle Street, in honor of Turtle. And I love that as well. And reasonably, there are lots of other streets to name in this community. So if you have some street names that you have ideas for, please drop them down in the comments below. The next fix comes from THR, who says that we may need to play a little bit of whack-a-mole to get the fuel plant to switch over from grains to, petro to petroleum. rather. Now, this is something I've actually seen happen where it switches over, but it must have meant that the business failed and re-rented out. So I'm going to need to play some whack-a-mole. We're going to delete this a few times and hopefully we end up with petroleum and not grains. Start nice and slow. One, two. Then speed up more. One, two, three, four. Then stomp away. Because we're about to find out the number of today. And on our sixth attempt, we get a crude oil company, which is what we're looking for. Now, interestingly, it requires half as many employees and many more just educated employees. So it's just a different sort of setup, which honestly, I'm all here for. That's completely fine. It'll probably lead to more balance in the region generally. And our last fix comes from a guy named Phil who's sitting in front of this computer. He noticed that we have a high school sports field right here that is burned down and it will never repair. And this is, I think, a problem with the way that we're using dev mode. It's fine. We are going to get past it, but we are going to need to replace this. So I'm going to delete this and then we'll just need to pretend that we're placing our high school sports field exit out or our high school rather, and then replace our sports field. Listen, folks, this isn't ideal. <laughs> the really sad thing about it is we got rid of some of the grass textures and things like that, that were back here. I'm just not going to worry about it for the time being. Hopefully in the future, that becomes a little bit easier to work with. But for now, uh, at least we've got our stadium back and things are working well again. And with that, I think we're going to leave it here. And I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed bringing it to you. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really want to thank you for the privilege of your time today. There's a million things that you could have been doing. You decided to hang out with me and play some City Skylines too. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Take care and bye-bye.